Hey guys, so I am in the basement and we have concrete, which feels amazing. Hi everyone, welcome back to Fletcher Creek Cottage. I'm Dina and as you may know, my family and I are building our dream home from the ground up. This is by far the largest DIY project we've ever taken on. And I'm so happy to say that we've been making tons of progress. In today's video, I'm sharing what we've been up to and the process of installing our in-floor radiant heat and pouring our basement concrete floor. So stay tuned. Hey guys, I've had a very busy day. Uh, I had a appointment in town this morning and then this afternoon we were supposed to have all of our pecs delivered that we're using for the in-floor heating and it said it was delivered and signed for, but it was not. <laughs> so we were worried that we were robbed again. Uh, we checked all our cameras and nothing. So it turns out the guy, the FedEx guy, delivered it to the wrong house. He got a couple of packages confused and he was able to go pick them up and bring them back here. So thankfully we got those today. Now that we've got that and um, everything's good, I'm heading down to the basement to lay down the remainder of the vapor barrier. And then I'm gonna finish putting up all of the two inch foam on top of that. And then in the next couple of days, we can install all in-floor heating. I'll update you guys on that as we go along. So here's the layout of the basement. This whole wall is the walkout area. So this is where we have windows and a patio door. And then this entire wall is made up of windows. And today we're working on getting the in-floor uh, heating system put down. So you can see this is kind of like a rough sketch of the layout. We have six zones going down in the basement and uh, here you can kind of see a little bit more. It's color coded so we know how to lay all of this out. So we worked all day today. Um, they're saying it's gonna start raining soon. 
So we're wrapping it up for the day, but that's totally fine because we got all of the in-floor heating done. I'm gonna flip the camera around. Oh, there's the rain. I'm gonna flip the camera around real quick and show you guys all that we got done. We've got six zones in here and this is just the basement. You can see that we uh, laid out all of the walls using spray paint and Aaron did a diagram on his computer and then we just transferred it down here. So he used spray paint to mark out all the walls and all the different zones. And then he kind of marked the areas where we needed to follow. And then Aaron rolled it and he put it in place. And then I used the stapler to put all these little plastic staples in that holds it into this two inch foam here. And um, we rented a little hand stapler. It was amazing. It was under $30 to rent it for the day and it made my job so much easier. But we've got all of that. Over here, you can see that we've got a wall that um, we need a deeper footing for because this is gonna be a supporting wall and this is also gonna be a supporting wall. And Aaron actually just ran to town because he needed to get some parts so he can build the manifold right here. This is where all of our heating is gonna be back here. Over here, we have a few more zones. You can see here's a wall here. This is a hallway here that leads to the bathroom and the two bedrooms that are down here. And then this is just a walk-in closet area. Always so windy down here. So we decided to take some scrap OSB and just kind of block the windows temporarily so our floor wouldn't be blowing around while we were laying down all of this plastic and all of this two inch foam. Flitty room and the manifold's gotta go back there. Um, but other than that, we are well on our way to being ready for our pour. So all in all, it was a really good day. We got a lot done and I'm very excited about getting this poured. And we're gonna be pouring our uh, second story, our garage footings at the same time because we're gonna have a pump truck out here. So it just makes sense to get both pours done at once.
Hey guys, so I am in the basement and we have concrete, which feels amazing. It did rain, so we've got a little bit of water standing here um, on this basement floor, but I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. We ended up hiring the same crew that we've hired before for the pavilion finished concrete work and other projects and that was Sprick Concrete Construction. They do an amazing job. We love working with them. Basically, all we had to do was assist them and they knocked it out of the park. Uh, the floor looks amazing. They left a tool with Aaron so he could score the floor. So we were able to get the concrete all cut. You guys know we're DIYers. We pretty much do everything ourselves, uh, but finished concrete work is the one thing that we hire out every single time. Unless it's a sidewalk or a little small patio, we do not feel confident at all to do the finished work on, you know, 2,000 plus square feet of concrete at the same time as pouring pudding. So there was no way we wanted to handle that ourselves. I'm so glad we hired it out. Like we're hiring this out. We're gonna, you know, hire somebody that we trust, that we know does a phenomenal job. And so we just went with Sprick and we're so glad that we did. So up next from us, as far as this build goes, we've got to get our uh, floor trusses in. So see all these joist hangers? We've got to get those trusses in and then we can lay our sheathing and go up from there. We're going to be stacking the second story, the main story, um, because we're in the basement now. The whole main story of this entire house and the garage is also gonna be Fox Blocks. The ICF walls worked great in the basement. We designed this house to build the whole thing ICF. We're not gonna have any um, two by four, two by six exterior walls at all in this house, just interior walls. So up next, we're just gonna be putting in those floor joists and moving up with the ICF walls. So it has been pretty warm this summer working down here, um, especially down in the basement. We ended up boarding up all of the windows in this a door opening just so we could work down here to lay the foam and underneath that we had to lay the vapor barrier and the wind was whipping through here and kind of messing things up so we had to board everything up and let me tell you it was hot working down here with that all boarded up um, but I'm so glad now we've got a breeze <laughs> and now that we could take all that you know scrap OSB that we were using down off the windows it feels a lot better down here in the next few weeks and months we're gonna be making a ton of progress on this house our goal really is to get this home enclosed before winter and that could be anywhere between late October to you know mid December our first snowfall so as long as we can get these walls up the roof on the windows in before it gets too cold we'll be able to work on this house all throughout the winter months unfortunately we weren't able to do that last winter so hopefully this year we make a ton of progress at this point our plans are to not hire anything else out other than the concrete like moving forward so we have a lot of work ahead of us but we're very excited about it and we're definitely up for the challenge thanks so much for following along with us as we tackle our diy dream home build project if you want more detailed step-by-step -step information about any of the projects that you've seen here on this channel you can always go over to my blog fletchercreekcottage.com thanks so much for hanging out with me today in this video and i look forward to seeing you in the next one